Namaste, my friends. Welcome to Yoga Bliss with Shelly. Today's practice is yoga for immobilized shoulder injuries. Yeah, it happens sometimes we get injured and I slipped on black ice and I messed up my rotator cuff and my shoulder has been hurting. So I really wanted to make a practice today dedicated for people who want to still move their bodies but they're having limitations in their shoulder. So join me and if you need a, a stool or a chair and grab any prop that you have that might be a helping friend like a block, a blanket, or a pillow and we're going to be moving our bodies but we're also going to be tapping into other parts of our bodies that are healthy still because yoga is for the whole body here. So join me, unroll the mat, unpeel the edges and together let us do this. in your traditional crisscross applesauce. I know sometimes that we can have restrictions on that can be a really challenging pose. So you can also join me on a stool or a chair that is going to allow you to root your feet onto the earth. So just finding that space. So if you need to pause this real quick and then grab your stool. And we're gonna begin by just rooting our feet in the earth here. We're gonna start with a little breath work because breath is such a powerful force. And when we have injuries, I know a lot of times we can hold our breaths. So you can obviously snuggle that immobilized shoulder into the body and ground the opposite hand, the left hand onto the upper leg here. And we're just gonna begin by bringing the inhale into the chest and the heart and filling that up. Letting it go. And I know my dad just had a shoulder replacement, so that can be a hard thing is using your breath and maybe if you've had a surgery where you've had a ventilator on your throat, or I think it's a ventilator that they use or a CPAP, whatever, that it can be, it can hurt to breathe. Also, it's very important to breathe. So if you can, allow yourself to find a breath that you can bring into your body and equally exhale to your body that feels good for you. And we're gonna just do 10 of those. And I really encourage you, if you can here, find a little length in your spine by just gently lifting up that heart because I know these shoulder injuries want to keep us hunched over because we feel safer and protected. And if you need to, you can wrap that opposite arm around and relieve a little bit more of that pressure. I know that feels good for me. And taking 10 of your own breaths. I know I'm still here with you. I'm just gonna do my breaths with you. And allow yourself to hear the breath on the exhale if you choose an open mouth or really press the breath out with that nasal exhale. And just allow each breath to fill your body up because we're on this healing journey here. And breath is this wonderful thing that we never have to ask for and it just comes and it goes, right? It's just ever omnipresent with us. Halfway done, friends. So making these last four really count, really deepening into that breath and expanding that belly. This last one, make it the deepest and longest exhale you've breathed all day. Awesome work, my friends. And just batting the eyelashes open. And again, just really rooting into the feet and just bringing the awareness to the soles of the feet. And if you are in that sukhasana, you could really just bring in your awareness in the bottoms of how your 
legs are crisscrossed, applesauce onto the earth. So really just finding, finding your footing really into the earth here. And really just, if you are in that chair, really just lifting up the toes and really pressing really mindfully each toe from the pinky, the ring finger, the middle to the thumb. It can be really challenging to, to really gently get those feet into the earth. So in yoga, we have two parts of the feet, right? It's the front pad and the heel. So we're really gonna just like suction those into the earth. And we're gonna exhale and we're gonna do seated cow and cat. So whether you're in that sukhasana, that crisscross applesauce, or you're in the chair, we're gonna exhale, really curving, flexing that spine on the inhale. And we're gonna exhale slow and steady at your own pace. I know if you have a broken bone, that might be kind of challenging. So knowing that this is not like a class that is, make sure, I guess I should say, that you have permission from your doctor to move your body. And just be very mindful, listening to your body. If anything is like tingy, stretchy, burny, just back off and find something that works best for you. I know with my shoulder injury, really find the arch of the spine, exhale, I get these burning, pier piercing, searing pains in mine. And so then that's when I will take an opportunity to ice or put some heat on. So exhale forward, inhale the arch. Really focusing on your inhale. As you come forward, arch, arch, arch that spine. Oh, it feels good. Exhale forward. Just taking it slow. And steady. Because healing is this journey and we must be gentle and slow down. And I know that it's really hard for a lot of us. I know it's really hard for me to admit that I have an injury or an owie and I just have to, it's okay to be okay with, right? Not being okay, even though it's really contradictory. Exhaling, inhale, and let's just find a little neutral spine and maybe with this free arm, if you have a free arm, hopefully you don't have a double, I don't think they would do, you know, hopefully you wouldn't have double arm things. If you do have a free arm, we're gonna find that length from the spine here. We're gonna inhale, that arm up high, and we're gonna exhale down. And we're gonna inhale, we're gonna raise it, we're gonna exhale from the center, and we're gonna twist and take this again at your own pace. So maybe your twist only comes to here. Maybe your twist, you can look a little bit further. I know sometimes we can be a little bit more leery when we have these injuries in our shoulder, in our arms. So just taking it at, at your own pace as we breathe that breath in and exhaling it out. And really find something to gaze at. It's a very helpful tool in yoga to find in Sanskrit what is called a drishti. And that just helps draw the mind's focus right here because right, we have these racing minds with these racing thoughts. And obviously, if we have this arm injury happening, this arm healing, right? You really want to focus your energy on healing that and not hurting yourself again. Or if you've had a surgery, really just focusing on that healing that the body naturally does right on its own. Even when it's painful, it's healing, my friends. Exhaling that breath. Using that focal point to anchor you in. And slowly from the center, coming back and just meeting me in that nice neutral spine. And when you're ready, we're gonna twist. So the twist is gonna come from the core first, right? Twist from the core, the center, and then you're gonna bring into the shoulders. And again, knowing that you could be able to maybe just, even if it's just looking a little bit to your left hand side, or if your body's allowing it, we're gonna inhale and just twist where you can. And knowing that yoga is a practice, it's not a perfect, and it's definitely not a one size fits all. So it's really important to listen to your body. And I actually went to see um, an orthopedic person yesterday, and that was his biggest advice to me was to listen to your body and to do what you feel like your body needs, which I loved, which is just following your gut instinct, that intuition here, using that breath in and pushing it out. Bring that breath in and breathing it out. Wonderful work. From the center, we're gonna just take a minute and just wiggle out. Okay, 
So as we wiggle out here, we're gonna bring our focus on the neck because our neck holds all of the tension. So we're gonna just begin by spiraling the nose and we're gonna be going in a counterclockwise position. So, right, the clock goes to the right. So counterclockwise is gonna to go to your left. And we're gonna just slowly start spiraling here and really tune into the neck and how the neck is feeling and how the neck has been holding that tension, holding maybe the stress of the injury or the stress of the healing, right? We hold it in all these different ways and just spiraling and making this spiral grow from almost like a small size, tiny little plate to a medium sized plate and then growing all the way to one of those really big dinner plates. And just taking it slow and steady. Doing your best to really focus on that inhale. And then equally press that exhale. Because that breath, my friends, it really helps us. That breath helps us breathe into healing and breathe into parts of our body that need that oxygenation. Wonderful work. Take one last really big, big plate around and then meet me back at center. And then we're gonna go in, um, I'm gonna go right clockwise. So you're gonna go counterclockwise, opposite direction. So really your nose is carving these small circles. And really do your best to find integrity of the spine. And I know that it can hurt and that the body is probably feeling sore and really just Finding the parts of your body that are mobile and that are working and using that to your advantage. Because yes, we have to heal this part of our body by resting it and yes, it's annoying and we wanna just be and do and go back to life normal. However, we have to listen to our bodies, listen to our care providers and take care of our body for its highest good of healing. And knowing that healing is not like the end point, I've learned that healing is just a part of this journey. So really spiraling and growing into those big circles, big dinner plates. Awesome. Taking one last big rotation around and meeting me at center and just wiggling out the head here. And now we're gonna use that hand that is working. I like to do this. It's like or even if you can move your fingers, it's like spirit fingers. You can just uh, wiggle, move what you can. So we're gonna exhale, and just with the help of our hand, our left hand or right hand, whatever side that you've got mobile, we're gonna exhale and just gently help ourselves. You can help yourself with your hand, or if you want to, you can let that hand rest. And just let that neck kind of, maybe if it feels good, you can just slowly rock side to side. But take these gently. If you also need support in the front body, you can use your, maybe like a fist and you can hold your chin if that needs help or if it just feels good here. So as you come forward, breathe that breath into the back of the neck and let it go. One more really deep breath, just allowing that neck to just loosen and relax a little bit here. And let it go. Slowly from that center, right? Got that core, no matter what your perception of your core is, it's strong, it holds you up all day. Raise that head up if you need a helping hand, press it up. Now we're gonna exhale to the left. So just drawing the ear towards the left shoulder. And you can just stay here. I know for me that stretch is like, woo, feeling deep because that's where I'm holding my tension. So really breathe into wherever it's feeling tight. You can use that helping hand here. You can also use that helping hand here. So do what feels good for you. And I want you to really to just focus on two more of your own breaths. Maybe test your center of gravity and close your eyes. Okay, let go. Good. Nice work. Okay, and now coming back to center, and I know it can feel a little tingy pingy. Just loving your body, being careful and gentle with your body. So we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side, on the left side, allowing the neck and the ear to hinge towards the right side body. And right, so my hand on this side, yeah, it's not here. So I can use this hand to help me because you 
you got to help yourself when you can. And I feel really blessed because my injury is not my right hand. And I know that my dad's is, so I'm sending him so much love. And perhaps it's going to really teach him and maybe others like you to be more ambidextrous and to, to make us be more expansive and using our body, even though I know it's frustrating, breathing that breath in and letting it go. Two more of your own. Letting it go. And I can tell my body naturally just tries to crouch into the injured side and you know, that's okay. You just gotta show up who you are. Awesome work. And then from here, the last one is we're just gonna exhale. We're gonna tip that chin up high to the sky and again, taking it at your own pace. And you can just use that free hand and just gently press into the base of the chin, the very tip of the chin and then resting the pointer and the ring finger up, if that feels good. You can also kind of press just on your forehead if that feels good, or if you need support on the back of your head, you can draw the hand there. So really tune into your spine. Mine was just being real lazy and floppy, so I'm gonna inhale. I might be a little sore, and that's okay. Breathe into those tight spots. Breathe into the, the painful areas. Breathe that prana, that life force that is that healing energy that our body needs. Letting it go. Yes, good work. Awesome. Big more, one more breath. Awesome, coming back to center. Okay, so for those of you who are feeling like you can stand up, we're gonna do just a couple poses to get our legs moving because the legs are healthy and moving. Hopefully yours are. Maybe you have restrictions in your knees or your hips. I know that's okay too. You can also choose to do these in the chair. We're gonna do a little chair yoga or standing yoga. Take this, right? This is your practice. So we're gonna do a little bit of a warrior one. So for those of you who are new to the practice, that's going to be just grounding this hind foot. So this is going to be your right foot and facing the toes at a 45 degree angle away from us. And then we're gonna face the front foot bent forward. So traditionally, right, in a warrior one, we're going to stand up if that feels good for you. You can maybe have your chair here in case you need it. And I really encourage you to have your mat under your feet because we do not want to be slipping. And definitely have that chair near you or a wall so you can have the support if you're feeling off balance or if you do just need to take a little seat. That is completely fine. So from this warrior one, we're gonna bring our hips and our heart facing the short edge of the mat. We're gonna just find that long length of energy from the sit bones up to the top of the head. We're gonna inhale for a cactus, bending the arm on that side and just breathe three of your own breaths here. So if you want, you can inhale, raise it up. And what you wanna do if you are standing is you wanna bend and when you peek down, you only want to see the tip of that front toe. You just want to be leery if that knee is really pressing forward because you want to keep proper alignment of the joints. And again, if you need, you can sit here and breathe that breath in and let it go. Breathe that breath in. Find support where you need it. There's no shame in props. I'm a huge advocate of props for yoga because everyone's body is different. And especially when we're on this healing journey in our body, we really need to take it slow because our body is not at a 100% max. So really listen to your body. Inhale that breath in, let it go. So now we're gonna just do a slight transition and we're gonna open up the feet, the front foot, that is the left foot for you, facing that long edge of the mat. And really make sure you're on that mat, even if you have that chair, you can just scoot that chair back. So right with the Virabhadrasana 2 in Sanskrit, which is warrior 2. You're going to inhale. If you are raised up, squeeze through the inner thighs here, pressing, really rooting through those four corners of the feet that we talked about. Those two in the front, two in the heel, really pressing down into the earth and really activating through the soles of the feet and really just striking up through the calves, through the quads and hamstrings, coming all the way up to the glute, to the booty muscles and wrapping and spiraling all around the core of the body. So the difference for warrior one and two, warrior one is the hips face forward, body faces forward. Warrior two, hips face the long edge of the mat. And then the toes are gonna open up from that 45 degree angle. So if you can, you can go long and strong here. 
You can exhale, bring a little bend to the arms here, or if you need that support, no shame in that. We're gonna just find our warrior as good as we can. Exhale, then allow yourself to peek towards the bent leg in the front, bringing that body in. You could also find a little bend here. You can gaze down at the mat. Good work, you're doing it, right? We're moving our body and healing at the same time. We are crushing it. Big breath here, let it go. Awesome work, my friends. And from here, so we're gonna just take a little forward fold, a wide-legged forward fold. So if you need the support of the chairs, just open up the legs as wide as they can go. And again, if it's restricted in your hips or knees, that's okay. No shame in using the chairs. I know my hamstrings get super tight and I sometimes hold that self-limiting belief that I'm not that flexible. So if you do have that stool and you're feeling like it, open those legs up, you can grab that chair and you can just exhale and fold forward to what feels good for you. I know that I'm much more limited right now my body's like, ah, oh, maybe, maybe not. Or you can also sit your boutons in the chair and then just do what you can. Just lean forward to what feels good for you. So as you hinge forward, allow yourself to just breathe into that back body, letting it go, finding support where you need it. As you root those feet into the earth, you can also find a nice Bend the knees here, and again, if your legs need to be closer together and you're just hinged over at the heart here, and really tuning into how the back is, right? Our back, I know when it's injured, it likes to hunch forward, and maybe that's okay today. Just taking your body one moment at a time, one healing increment at a time as you breathe into the back of the heart. Let it go. Awesome work. So we're gonna hinge from the back of the heart and we're gonna lift it up, right, wherever you are. So we're gonna come into those warriors on the opposite side. So knowing if you need to use that stool, you are totally fine, there's no shame. So right, this is left foot facing, toes facing the short edge of the mat, right foot facing the corner of the mat at that 45 degree angle. Hips facing the short edge of the mat, Virabhadrasana one, warrior one up here, if that feels good for you. I encourage you to power up if you can. However, if you're in a space where you're just like, oh, I need to get my butt down, that's okay. So find your seat. And we're gonna, you can more bend when you're sitting here. And you can inhale, finding that cactus or that bent arm, big breath here. Letting it go. That finding your strength through your feet. So bringing the awareness into the soles of the feet is like pressing into the ground, getting that support from the earth really shooting that energy up through the calves. Sending all the way up to the hamstrings, the inner thighs, the outer thighs, the tops of the thighs, spiraling up to the gluteus maximus and medius, the big and the smaller muscles of the booty, and all the way up to the core here as you bring that breath in. Letting it go. Really bringing that awareness into the feet, into the parts of the body that right, are tangible and that are movable, right? Because I know often we can focus on, we can focus on the hurts and the pain, but focus on what is going good. What is going good in your body? What is working in your body, right? And hold on to that. Okay, now we're gonna take this slight transfer, right? We're gonna open up the hips, open up the heart, right? That front knee is still gonna be bent forward, whether you are using that stool or not. And gentle bend, always gentle micro bends to the knees to keep healthy joints in the body. You can bend here, you can exhale, raising the arm long and strong, summoning your inner warrior. I know for me, I always I hold this perception that I'm, I'm a strong person, I'm a strong woman, and being weak is something that I don't have time for. And the other day when I was opening my hope hummus, it said, um, being okay with not being okay. And I almost wanted to crumble it up and throw it away. And I was really annoyed at it. And I was actually at my women's circle. And my girlfriend said, Shelly, that message is for you. And, and, it, and it's okay to be okay with not being okay. <laughs> Which is hard for me. So knowing that it's okay. And even when we have these injuries, we're just working towards healing. 
Breathe another breath in. Let it go if you're in that chair. Awesome work, my lovelies. Doing great. Okay, my friends. And back from here, uh -uh, from that forward fold. So if you have that chair, uh, we're gonna just pop that back. And we're gonna just slowly, however this looks for you, but you can start with one leg and we're gonna just heel toe, right? It, it's exactly what it sounds like. So the heel goes in, toe goes in, heel goes in until you're at the center on that side. Heel goes in one side, toe goes in. Find your center. And if you need a wider gate, allow yourself to open up. Usually I would end a practice with laying in Shavasana. However, it is really hard to get comfortable and lay down. So we're gonna finish this with a standing, just kind of rooting into the earth and a little bit of a breath work, just to allow us to know that we can literally step into what is going good in our lives. And even if we have something going on with our feet or knees or hips, right? And maybe you're still able to stand. However, if you need to, no shame, use that stool, you can sit down. So finding your feeding and just rooting into the earth, this is called the mountain pose in yoga. And really just finding that inner strength from really rooting those feet into the earth. Again, lifting up, pressing into the earth, maybe just taking a little bend here. Inhale, raising up from that center and doing your best to raise up your spine and give yourself that beautiful, nice length in the spine. Because when we crush forward, we're actually compressing our diaphragm and we're lessening our energy. So when we raise up, we're allowing more oxygen into the body and we're allowing ourselves to have more, more energy, right? So if you're ever feeling low energy, right? I mean, it depends on your sleep, obviously, and your food and what you're doing. You can do an instant correction by inhale, raising that heart up raising up that diaphragm and take a deep breath. Oh, there it is, I have more energy because I'm breathing more expansive breaths here. So from here, my friends, we're gonna finish our practice. We're turning back to those 10 breaths because breath is this very superpower thing that we have. And even if it can be challenging and if you had a surgery or perhaps it is harder to breathe right now, just allow yourself to surrender to your breath. So we're gonna finish up if you can, I really encourage you to close your eyes. And again, if you need to grab that stool, you can finish up here on the stool or you could root into your mountain. Just closing the eyes and breathing a healing breath all the way into the body, into the shoulder, into the arm, into the hand. And letting that breath go. Breathing healing into the body. Allow that healing to fill the space around you. Breathing love into your shoulder. Breathing love out around you. Breathing acceptance into your body. Breathing it out. In these last five breaths on the inhale, I just want you to breathe in. I am healing those affirmations. Exhale, I am healing. So taking four of those at your own pace. wonderful work and slowly just batting the eyelashes open and allowing all of those healing affirmations to wash over you and in this moment just imagining yourself maybe in a couple months or however long this healing journey is and imagine yourself maybe it doesn't even matter the time imagine yourself doing all the things that you want to do in your body so imagine yourself if you want to be dancing or playing sports or coaching or 
picking up your kids or your grandkids, throwing them into the air. I want you to hold that vision and that will really help you in your healing journey. And just bringing those palms, kissing palms to the heart. If this hand has to be completely mobile, just bring that hand to the heart, humbly tucking the chin. And when we say namaste in yoga, it's just acknowledging that love in you and then seeing it in the others around you. That's all that it is. So say it with me or not, whatever works best for you. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I send you so much healing and allow yourself to rest and maybe ice yourself after this or put some heat on it. I will see you back here very soon. Thank you.